When asked, most beef producers will say the value of belonging to an organization like NCBA is the strong voice it provides in Washington, D.C. on behalf of the cattle industry. That was on display in April as NCBA president and Minnesota producer Don Schiefelbein testified before the U.S. House Agriculture Committee about issues in the cattle markets. Schiefelbein also explained to the lawmakers that his testimony was based on policy decisions made by the producers he represents. Joining us now is Gene Copenhaver, a Virginia cattle producer who also serves as the vice chair of NCBA's policy division. Gene, Don mentioned the policymaking process of NCBA in his testimony ahead of Congress. You've been a grassroots advocate and in that process a long time. Can you tell us about that? Yes, and it is truly a, a grassroots process. Having served as vice chair and chair of international trade and tax and credit for the last eight years, I've seen that process at work. Uh, the process begins at the local state affiliate we level, um, probably lower than that. The, um, the local cattle, county cattlemen groups or an individual comes through the state affiliates. The state affiliates does propose policy to the national level. We meet twice a year to talk about that policy in our committees. All the committees are, are grassroots committees from across the nation. The policy goes to the committees um, in February at, at our national convention and then again at midsummer. Whatever is decided in February is interim policy until the summer meeting and then at the summer meeting whatever other new policy or policy that that has come come from our, our the uh, February meeting is is talked about at that time. In October every year, there is a policy uh, ballot sent out to every NCBA member in the United States. That ballot is is uh, processed. They're, they've voted and processed, and that becomes our policy book after that uh, is approved. A lot of voices along the way that have an impact on this. So how do volunteer leadership, as, as you as a volunteer leader, how do you support that policy that's set forth by the members through that process? Well, after we get the policy book, uh, and then we, we go over the policy book as a vol in volunteer leadership, and we work with, with our lobbyists on, in Washington, D.C., the 11 great lobbyists we have up there. They depend on it to be in policy before they can enact anything. As leadership, we have to see if we're covered with policy before we can go forward in a lot of those areas. So it's so important to have your voice heard along the way um, from the county level up in the policymaking process, but it's also equally as important to be engaged at, at the state and, and national level in terms of state representatives in Congress. Give us your perspective on that in, in terms of producers getting engaged with their representatives. Yeah, you know, you know not only state, but local. I mean, there's a lot of lo local things there that is there. We have so many different production systems in the United States, and it is so different from area to area, and I'm, I'm learning a lot more, you know, being from the East and what's going on in the West is, is somewhat different lots of times. But going on to the state, I mean, there's a lot of state issues that are different throughout the country, and you need to be there with the state representatives and have a relationship with those state representatives. Nationally, you know, we have so some, some many national issues that we all need to get behind. You know, we, we have our, our, our fights within the industry, but, you know, I would say 90% of everything we, we do agree on. It's the 10% we don't agree on how we have. We were all looking for the same result, but sometimes we, we will have different ways to get to that result. You make a good point about all wanting to, to end up in the same place, which is a better beef industry and there's strength in numbers to help that happen. Yes. Talk about the importance of a, of a strong membership base uh, to, to support those efforts in DC. Uh, it's very important with NCBA being the largest and oldest organization in the country we, we, have, uh, we have something there that we can, we can really build on and actually we're growing our organization right now. I think uh, in the last two years we've got over a thousand new members up and numbers, numbers matter. Uh, you know, cause votes matter and vote individual votes with Congress, either a Senate side or a House of Representatives, one vote can make a big difference. So we need, we need to be all encompassing the United States to get those votes. And we need everybody, every region, you know, in, in CBA needs to be proactive with that. Yeah. And I know you've been really active in your state or state and local organizations throughout the, the industry and now involved with NCBA. Why do you volunteer your time uh, to serve as, as in a leadership role? You know, I had two good examples. My parents, uh, both of us very involved in the, in the cattle industry. Uh, my dad was uh, 
Virginia's rep on the on the uh, board directors for 10 years, and uh, they've always been been pushing us to be involved. Me and my my sisters, and that, like I push my my kids today. But if you're going to be in in business and you're into business to make the money, you better be at the table. Well, Gene, thanks for your thanks for the time you do give us and, and the industry. We're all better for it. Appreciate you. To support the work being done for the beef industry, join Gene, Don, and others by becoming a member of NCBA. By doing so, you'll be sustaining the work of NCBA in defending and advocating for the cattle industry in Washington, D.C. It's easy and important to do, so just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org.